my pieces I actually got so many views last year and since this is the second year of me applying I thought uh, clearly people wanted to see it last year so I'll show them again and I will give a bit of context as well so if you want to skip to the pieces there'll be timestamps in the description if you want to just skip to the pieces but before that I thought I'd give you an introduction and also since these videos get so many views please subscribe because it would really help out my career it would be a real it would just be really useful to have more subscribers on here and since there's a lot of views you know it would just be really helpful so if you could subscribe and if you do care about my career and how it goes please subscribe and if not i see how it is okay then um nah it's fine it's fine if you don't want to so the first contemporary also has a bit of swearing and a bit of triggering topics so if you're a family member then maybe skip that one or if you just don't want that then maybe skip that one but I picked it even though it's originally older and I aged it down because I just felt like I was more connected to that one than a lot of the other ones my own age so I chose that one and my next one is the one that I took to ArtSed's foundation course which I got a recall for and it's a bit more of a lighter monologue um, for contemporary and the monologue that was my classical that I got recalled for ArtSed with is actually not in this video because I just feel like I want to do more work on it and I don't want to paint it out yet so but I did Isabella measure for measure um OUB so faithless coward if you know it if you don't that didn't really mean anything to you um but I also I did Juliet because my audition coach recommended Juliet to me and I was like go big or go home you know what I mean and I feel like because Juliet's such a big character I actually don't see many people bringing Juliet because Juliet can maybe seem quite intimidating I don't know so I just thought I'll bring Juliet and I also brought John Webster's monologue as well because I feel like I wanted to do something that wasn't Shakespeare because I've vaguely seen a lot of the other Shakespeare's all before because I looked through them so I just thought I wanted something with a bit of a different writing style and it's also like more of a strong female character than a lot of the other pieces which are just like oh I want a man I want a man like no one cares at the end of the day like I'm fed up of those kind of classicals for now maybe I'll bring one next year and everyone will be like what are you doing you, you backtracking but I just wanted something a bit different so that's why I've gone for the pieces I've chosen last year I remember I was really nervous to show my pieces but this year I don't really care like um I feel like obviously it's a couple of months later so I have new pieces that I've done since then which I think are better than these pieces but I feel like at the end of the day I'm like there's bigger things to worry about than what other people think of your monologues and also lots of the feedback that people give that could be seen as negative can actually be quite helpful so <laughs> that's how I'm feeling about it and I hope it's helpful to see my monologues but I don't really know at this point <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time and I'll show you the monologues there was a spray that dad breathed in and now I don't have the eggs They've all been destroyed by radiotherapy and even if they found one, I can't carry it. The tumour wiped out half my organs. My body can't support a baby. Grandad, I'm 20 and I've just started menopause. I will never have children. I will never have children. I will never have children. You know what? I don't think I deserve them anyway. When a friend tells me she's pregnant, I smile and I hug and I kiss and ask dumb questions. How far along? Any names picked yet? What are you craving? But I don't know what I'm craving. That deep down I'm green and I'm bubbling and I'm thinking, you bitch. I hope it fucking dies inside you, you bitch. And when a pregnant woman walks past me on the street, I want to punch her in the belly and walk away when she falls to the ground and just leave her there to deal with it. And when a father tells me he's expecting his third boy, 
I want to rip his fucking cock off and squeeze it dry of any seed. And when I see a baby in a pram... I just want to pick it up. Smell its skin. Hold it to my heart. Stroke its little head. And never let another person touch it for the rest of its life. Is that normal, Grandad? I don't know. And I never will. Because the seed stops here. All kicked off yesterday. TK Maxx. Mum had this massive row with my dad about a spiralizer. She wants to make courgette. He's not keen. Next thing, she's making me pack an overnight bag jump in the car with her, driving halfway across the country so we can stay at Stace's mum's house on a futon. I wouldn't mind, but I was meant to be going to this really cool club night with my friend. We're on the VIP list. You go to this special chained off area, gold chains, there's Prosecco. It's quite a big deal. And all the way over, my dad's calling her. Trying to, she's not picking up. She's like, let him worry a bit. Let him think about what he's done. Mum reckons it's gone a bit deeper than courgette. The spark's gone, she says. Leaves his pants everywhere, does crosswords in bed and doesn't see me for who I am anymore which is apparently an empowered sexual being and potential vegan. They're just treading water, Mum reckons. Treading water till I get off to uni. And there's no point anymore, is there? There's no point. And I'm like, Mum, I don't want to hear this. Save it for Lorraine. Her best mate Lorraine, not Lorraine Kelly. And now my dad's texting me. He's here, apparently. He's in town, looking for my mum, needing directions. And I was like, Dad, I would love to help, but I'm at a shit non-party with Stacey's semi-mates in the middle of nowhere. Bye! So I can be there for the showdown? No thanks. I mean... I've literally spent the last 17 years watching their marriage disintegrate. Mum's words, not mine. I know exactly what she'll be saying. Like, too little, Alan. Too little, too late. And he'll look all forlorn or whatever. Probably cry a bit. Like he did in the middle of Moana. I'd rather be here, to be honest which is saying something. <laughs> Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, poor my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears, back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you, mistaking, offer up to joy. My husband lives, that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead, that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort. Wherefore weep I then? Some word there was, worse than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain, but oh, it presses to my memory, like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banished. That banished, that one word, banished, hath slain ten thousand Tybalts. What have I gained by thee but infamy? 
that would stain the spotless honour of my house and frighten them's noble society, like those which sicko the palsy and retain ill-scenting foxes about them are still shunned by those of choicer nostrils. What do you call this house? Is this your palace? Did not the judge style it a house of penitent whores? Who sent me to it? To this incontinent college? It's not you. It's not your high preferment. Go. Go brag how many ladies you have undone like me. Fare you well, sir. Let me hear no more of you. I had a limb corrupted to an ulcer, but I have cut it off, and now I'll go weeping to heaven on crutches. To all your gifts I will return them all, and I do wish that I could make you full executor to all my sins. But for all thou art worth, I'll not shed one tear more. I'll burst first. <laughs> Thank you.